If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay, so I think we can start now. So let me just uh, clarify one more thing. So basically, I would like to make this session as like, you know, that uh, 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 real time perspective. So uh, this training actually includes like CIG implementation, how we are going to implement the CIG. We'll talk about all these like structure, like, you know, that uh, different, different activities, what we have to perform to implement the CIG. And we will also try to understand some process flow as well, how actually the process flow is working and to achieve the process flow or whatever different, different setup that we have to, you know, like um, perform. We'll talk about all this setup. Okay. Uh, but apart from that, I will also try to show you some project specific document just only for look and feel. All right. So uh, I mean to say like, you know, in that case is like that will be only for your look and let me quickly recap that what we discussed in our previous session, that was a kind of introductory session and then we'll proceed. So that recap, I'm just doing only for your understanding purpose so that we can just align all those things. So what we discussed and then we'll move forward. So if you remember in the previous session, we discussed about the system architecture about the CIG, how actually the system architecture of CIG looks like. And in that cases, we discussed about like, you know, that uh, uh, CIG basically we have to use for the ERP integration, right? So generally, if your customer, they are having the SAP ERP system, and if they are going to implement the SAP Ariba applications, so they can implement any of the particular Ariba application. And in that cases, if they would like to have the integration, so in that cases, we have to place CIG in between of the ERP and the Ariba system, like you can see here. Right. So CIG, we have to place in between of this Ariba and the ERP system. So since we are placing the CIG in between of this ERP and the Ariba, so we can say CIG is going to act as the middleware. All right. So CIG is not actually the middleware. CIG is called as a direct con connectivity and it is transmitting the data in the real time. But since uh, from technically, if you see, we are placing in between of the ERP and the Ariba. So that is why it is called as a middleware. So as a result of this architecture, what will happen whenever you are going to send any information from ERP to Ariba, that information will first come from the ERP to CIG. And from CIG, it will go to the Ariba solutions, Ariba applications. And the same way, if you are going to send any particular information from Ariba to ERP, in that case also that information will come to uh, come from Ariba to CIG first and from CIG it will go to the ERP system. So this kind of landscape usually you will see with the customer side where you will have your ERP system in the back end. In the front end you will have the Ariba applications or whatever the applications that your customer they have implemented. And then you will have the integration like you know of this uh, integration with the CIG. Okay, and with the help of the CIG, this the particular information is going to flow from Ariba to ERP or from Ariba to e, Ariba to uh, sorry Ariba to ERP or from ERP to the Ariba system. Okay, so this is something a kind of normal landscape that you will see. Then apart from that, like whenever we have to work on the CIG, so as we understood, CIG is only applicable in case of the ERP integration, right? But it does not mean like whatever the ERP landscape that your customer they have, we can implement, we can use the CIG is not true because from CIG point of view as well, we are having some support matrix, right? So what is the support matrix from the ERP, from the CIG point of view? So in that case is like we have to actually check the versions of the ERP system. So generally, if you see from the ERP side, you will have two different kind of like a system. You may have the SAP ECC or you may have the SAP S4 HANA, right? So in case if your customer, they are they are available on the SAP ECC, in that case is you should have the ECC version at least ERP 6.0. So if your customer, they are not available on the ERP 6.0, they are on the lesser version, like let's say ERP 4.6. So in that case is they will not be able to use CIG directly and we have to talk to SAP team and accordingly we have to prepare the roadmap. So might be the SAP suggest to customer like they have to first upgrade their landscape to ECC 6.0 or higher, then we'll implement the CIG 
or might be based on the like a customer system architecture they may also suggest to go with some middleware and on top of the middleware that we have to implement the cig so this kind of thing also will like you know will be will come like during implementing the cig and we have to work with the sap team closely to how like to prepare our roadmap how we have to implement the cig okay but apart from that in some cases in case of the sap s4 hana so in case of SAP, as for HANA, we don't have any kind of limitations and whatever the HANA version you have, that is 1710, 1610, 1709, 1901, 2201, 2301 something. So whatever the HANA version you have, we can use the CIG on, on that, into that. So in that case, we don't have any kind of like limitations or restrictions, whatever the HANA version that basically we have we can easily use CIG on top of that, okay? So this is one thing that we have to take care during this CIG implementation. And once all this particular information, all the particular activities will get completed. Now, one thing here you can ask, or let me ask this question just to uh, uh, check your understanding. How you came to know, like what is your customer ERP version, whatever different different landscape they, they have, or whatever different middleware they are they are currently using how you will come to know about this during the implementation system status uh, on ecc side we can see that right uh, what are all the components are installed on the ecc mm -hmm. and their versions yeah and the other one a basis team can get those information from their uh, uh, sap portal Okay, any further guess? We will initially no. have the architecture review uh, meetings and all that. So during the workshops, we'll know what are all the different components that they have as part of the landscape uh, during the initial uh, setups. Exactly. That's correct. Even Shina, you are also correct. But generally, what is happening? Even uh, like so, what is happening? Like uh, we, during implementing this any Ariba solutions. So initially, before going to start our like you know, prepare phase, initially we have to conduct a kind of system architectural review meetings with the client, and uh, you have to use some template for that. I will show the template once again. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll show the template in some time. So the template having the list of the standard questionnaire and that questionnaire we have to discuss with the customer, like what is your current ERP version, how many different kind of environment you have, like you have, do you have development, test, quality, test or production and even sandbox as well. Do you have any kind of middleware? If yes, so what is the like version of the middleware? Do you have DMS? Do you have this kind of feature? So all the questions are there in the template. So that's something we have to initially run with the customer and uh, we have to ask them all these things. If you are already working with the client, so some of the informations you can easily find out as a, a Sinu said, like we can go to system, we can find out. But if you are not aware about some information or in any cases, even though you have the information, you don't have the information. In both the cases, we have to connect to the customer and we have to give our input in terms of that like landscape uh you know that information like this kind of landscape you have or whatever they will say we have to capture in that accordingly we have to uh you know uh, take the decision or we'll come to know like what exact exactly customer they have and based on that we have to actually prepare this roadmap so this is one mandatory activity that generally uh, we have to perform with the client during any of the cig implementation Okay, so based on that, you will able to come to know. You will you will able to compare this CIG support matrix. And once all these things will be done, then we have to form our team for the CIG implementation. So generally, if you talk about from team formation point of view, point of view, so we require the different different team member to work on the CIG implementation. So this is not the one man show. So don't like, you know, assume as a Ariba consultant or as a CIG consultant, I will take care of all those things. It's not true. If you are having very good experience, your expertise in this, in the, all the area, in that cases you may do, but generally in that cases also it's not feasible because in a, if you see in certain area, we are having lots of things. 
right so a single person will not be able to perform all those activities that's why we require the different different team member okay if you talk about from team size point of view so we require the different different team that we can say basically we require the basis consultant basis consultant will work on the some uh, uh, system setting system setup like they will install the cig add-on they will install the cloud connector they will configure some technical cig add-on configuration they will config the cloud connector as well right so all those things basis team they will do we require some partial help from the sap ariba customer support team that is shared service team they have to add the cig component to our customer license they will help in that cases we have to be there as a ariba consultant apart from that we require the sap abap consultant so sap abap consultant they are part of the sap erp side and they are mainly responsible for the coding activity so wherever we require any kind of coding, any kind of like implicit enhancement implementation, or we have to implement any kind of customer exit, all those things ABAP consultant, they will take care. So we require the SAP ABAP consultant partially. Then apart from that, as a Ariba consultant, if you know about the SAP ERP side, because if you see as part of the Ariba to ERP integration, we have to perform some certain configuration, which are actually relevant to the SAP materials management module. In short, we can say SAP MM module. So as the Ariba consultant, if you know about the SAP MM process, then you can perform the MM side configuration in the ERP side. Otherwise, if you are not, you are not aware. So in that cases, like we require the partial SAP MM consultant help to perform some certain configuration in the in uh, ERP side as well. So like that, like this, we have to actually form the team, and each and every team member they will have their own responsibilities. Okay. So whatever the different different activities that actually we have to perform, that team has to perform. So each and every team team members, they will have their own on active responsibilities and they have to perform their own activity. So whatever different different activities they have to actually perform, we will talk about in detail level, but let me just quickly summarize those, those activity once again for your information purpose. So if you see this slide, in this slide, you can see in the first activity, we are having download and downloading and installing the add-on. This activity, that's something done by the basis consultant, they will do in the ERP system. Then we have to enable the Ariba CIG. This activity required your Ariba customer support team help. And even we also have to do this activity. After that, we have to actually download and install the cloud connector. So this activity required uh, basis consultant help. They will do in, the, in, in their customer firewall. Then set up the global settings. So basically as part of the global settings, basis team, they will configure the certificate. They will configure the RFC destination. They will configure the port, different, different technical configuration they will do. So this activity also done by the basis consultant in the ERP system, all right. After that, we have to send the SAP information to CIG. That is something our job as an Ariba consultant, we have to do in each and every system. Then we have to create the setup. Uh, we have to create the integration project on the CIG tool. That is our responsibilities we have to do. Middleware is something optional. Then we require to do some general settings activity. This is something we have to do as a Ariba consultant. And in some cases, you can also include SAP MM consultant if you don't, you are not much aware about the ERP design. Okay. Then apart from that, if you talk about importing the master data, this is also done by that like uh, uh, as a Ariba consultant. So, you know, for the ERP integration, master data integration is very important. So whatever the particular master data that you want to integrate based on your scope, that's something done by us as the Ariba consultant. We have to configure the transactions. In these cases, you need MM consultant help. If you know, you can do it. I'm not saying, but if you don't know, then definitely you require the SAP MM consultant because some of the configuration are generally relevant for, from the uh, SAP MM core module. Okay. Then specify the cross difference value. This is a part of the integration project setup in the CIG tool that we have to do. Implement extensions and bodies. 
extensions and what is in the sense you can say it's a kind of coding thing right so whenever we require any kind of additional coding or you want to enhance your the enhance the standard program what is there in the erp side so in all these activities we require the abap consultant help so the sap abap consultant they will implement the different different kind of extensions that is customer exit bodies they will implement and even sap has given the all the information about the extensions and bodies we have to only collect the information pass it to abap consultant and the abap consultant they will actually perform this activity okay then at the custom access lt what is the access lt access lt in the sense cost mapping you can say okay so this is called as a custom mapping in case of the ariba to erp integration sap has given the standard mapping if you see the erp side you know erp having different database ariba having diff different database right and not only database we are having in the erp side different tables different different field and if you see in the Ariba side, so generally from the Ariba side, we are, we will never have the database access, but wherever you can see some list of the field information. So Ariba side is having different uh, field name as well because that is based on the Java coding, right? So whenever we are working on the any integration, it's not about only ERP to Ariba, even if you're going to integrate any third party tools as well with the ERP system. So we have to perform the field to field mapping, right? But in case of the SAP Ariba integration, the field to field mapping is not required. And why it's not required? Because SAP has given the standard mapping, like a standard mapping itself. So all the is wherever, like the mapping, wherever the uh, integration is possible, field by field, SAP has given all the mappings as the standard. But in some certain cases, if that the standard field mapping is not working for you, or it's not going to give you the results as you're expecting, in that cases, you have the flexibility, you can perform the custom mapping. Okay, so this custom mapping we have to do as a Ariba consultant. If you are having the good knowledge on the custom mapping part, that you can do that. Otherwise, even during the implementation, like uh, Ariba implementation, you will have the NDL team member from the SAP customer support side. They are called as a network deployment lead and even technical design lead as well. They are doing the mapping like in the CIG uh, tool. So we can also perform if you know, otherwise you can take the SAP Ariba customer support team help also. They will also able to perform, they will do the mapping during the Ariba implementation. Okay. Then apart from that, in the last, we have to review all the configuration. We have to perform into in testing. We have to do the comprehensive testing. And if your testing is good, testing is okay. That means you are now ready for the deployment. So these are the different, different things that's something like we have to perform as part of the CIG implementation with the help of the different, different team member. All right. So now in the next, we'll move to the system, not system first. First, we'll try to understand some basis activity, like how they are ad like downloading and installing the add-on and how they are installing this cloud connector as well that's something we'll do because this activity will not be able to see live this is a one-time activity that basis consultant they have to perform so there's something we'll do then we'll move to the system and we'll discuss like you know the step-by-step -step structure how to set up the CIG okay am I making some sense or is there any question comment suggestion from anyone we heard XSLD is to uh, uh, change the layout. Is it a print? Print? Uh, is it for the print or it's mapping? It's mapping. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. So let's move to the next step. Now let's talk about how actually we have to download add-on software component. So we, in the sense, don't assume as a Ariba consultant, we in the sense basis consultant. 
Okay. So how the basis team, they are going to download this uh, like uh, add-on component, but this activity is very important activity. Why this activity is a very important activity? The thing is that if you try to find out the CIG specific configuration in your ERP system, like you can see, I mean my ERP system. Okay. And if I would like to see like the CIG specific config node, then what I will do, I'll come here. I'll go to SPRO and once I'll come in the SPRO, even if you're also having the ERP access, you can try to log in in your system. And once you come here, we have to go to SAP reference IMG. And in the SAP reference IMG, if you see in the last, we have the config node that is integration with other SAP component. Okay, this config node is a standard. A config node you can find out in all the ERP system like ECC or HANA, you can find out. But once you go inside this here, so inside this, like, you know, you can see we have the config node, SAP Ariba Cloud Integration Gateway. All right. So this SAP Ariba Cloud Integration Gateway node will not be available by default, right? So by default, you will only be able to find out integration with other SAP component. This SAP Ariba Cloud Integration Gateway node will not be there as a standard. Okay, so this is something depending on the requirement. If your client, they are going to they are, they are going to perform the integration uh, from ERP to Ariba. So in their cases, basis team, they have to actually download and install this software component, like this component. And once they will install this like add-on component, then only you will able to find out the CIG node in your SPRO. So that's why this node is very important. And this activity done by the basis consultant itself, right? How actually they are doing this activity for that they have to open the SAP service marketplace. And currently I think this is now called as a service SAP one, something like that, right? So we have to actually log in on the SAP service marketplace or SAP uh, something one platform. And it required your S user ID login. So generally from the ERP side, whenever we require to reach any kind of OSS, to reach any kind of support incident to the SAP team, or if you require to download and install the, any kind of software, any kind of packages. So we have to go there in the SAP service marketplace and it required the authentication of your S user ID. And once you logged in from the S user ID, then in that case, we will get this kind of screen. Right. And I believe in um, like, I think this month, this screen is also getting changed a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys seen that or not because of the SAP one migration. But most of the information are still remain same. So you will able to see the one option there. That is something download the software. So we have to go there, click on this download. This. Then it will give you this list under the installation and the upgrades and since we are going we are looking for the cig ariba specific uh, add-on so we have to be click on this a alphabet and once you click on this a alphabet then in the downside you will see the option of the this uh, add-on that is ariba cloud integration sap erp ariba cloud integration sap s for hana Okay, now we can see these two options here and depending on the requirement, depending on the scope actually, if your customer, your client, they are having the SAP ECC, then we have to choose the first option, Ariba Cloud Integration SAP ERP. Or if your customer, they are having the, uh, you know, like uh, the uh, SAP S per HANA, in that cases, we have to choose the Ariba Cloud Integration S per HANA options here. Okay, so based on the scope, whatever the particular add-on that you will choose here, then it will give you the option, the more detailed information, and accordingly, you can go there. Then you will see the installation option. We have to click on this installation. And after that, you will get this kind of like version information here. Okay, so in this case, we can see we are having three different versions for the ESP4 to ESP8, ESP0 to ESP8. So like that, the version you will able to see. 
and actually the basis team they will have the clear information as well like what is their e, like uh, erp version and on on which ESP, ESP, uh, you know that uh, version they are the year accordingly they will choose the appropriate version of the add-on and they will actually install the add-on so once they will install this add-on then actually if you see the add-on installation will get completed and you will able to find out the sap ariba cloud integration gateway config node in your sap erp system okay so this activity is completely done by the basis consultant basis consultant they will perform as ariba consultant our job our our job is not required in this cases this is completely done by the basis consultant okay then okay any question here in, ca in case of this add-on installation from anyone yes i uh, just want to clarify uh for myself that uh this falls after we complete the requirement gathering and uh, details and other information that we gather from business. And that's when this is the part we will do this as a first, very first task done by the basis consultant, right? That's true, but not exactly. Uh, uh, it very uh, is project to project as well. Okay. So generally this activity, we have to start during the like a prepare phase itself right because once you will start a project so you will have the scope right the clear scope like what whatever things you are going to deliver your customer okay, okay. now you know like you know like we require this uh, this particular Ariba application uh, implementation and we have to do the CIG integration as well so some clients they would like to see their system during the explore phase so when you will do the requirement gathering right so during requirement gathering we also have to demonstrate the system as well it's not in all the hundred percentage but yeah some customers they're expecting like currently i'm implementing one project for one of the africa client their requirement they have clearly said like during this explore phase i would like to see at least 20 percent of the data in our system okay so in that case it's like you know in the prepare phase itself once we will prepare our project plan accordingly we have to inform to basis team and we have to make them clear like this is the scope and please perform this all the activity from the integration point of view so at least during the explore phase we can perform the best practice integration okay so in that cases we have to do early otherwise generally we are going to perform the system setup during realization realization phase that means after the requirement gathering that time also we can do but it vary customer to customer that answers my question thank you Rohan. okay lalit ram any question from your side i am okay okay now in the next let's talk about the cloud connector setup okay now what is actually cloud connector let me try to show you something give me just one moment and well if you have something you want to ask you can discuss yeah, in case of custom uh xsld which you said no Rohan. so uh, from the Ariba perspective, we have any custom field and we are able to if we want to map that to a field in mm right so if we change that in the Ariba side, uh, and if we change that uh, the in the integration configuration, we can change that outbound. But what happens in the MM side? So once we change that in the Ariba's uh, integration configuration, we'll get the field in the outbound payload. But what will happen in case of MM? Do we do something at there at that end itself so that we'll have the field in the target mapping? Mm, yes, we are doing. So oh, that will again come up in the uh, same CIG portal, is it? Or hmm. CIG portal only. Okay. I will. I'll show you. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. So everyone is working in the Ariba, or anyone is also working in basis as, as well. working on SRM. 
No. Yeah, right? absolutely. But yeah, I've, I've, I've tested Ariba, but mainly I'm working on CPS still, you know, old technology. Mm, SRM is going, going to be replaced in coming days, right? Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, the cloud connector. So cloud connector basically playing the very important role. Okay. And why it is basically playing the very important role? So if you see the properties of the cloud connector, or we can say the functionality of the cloud connector. So whenever, uh, you know, like uh, we have to integrate any of the cloud solutions with the on-premise solutions, like you can talk about SAP SRM, SAP MM, right? These are the on-premise solutions. And we always have to log in with the help of the SAP GUI, correct? But when you talk about the Ariba, so Ariba is your cloud solutions because Ariba, we can work with the, with the help of the uh, web page or we can say with the help of the web browser, that is the cloud solutions. So whenever we have to work with this, like we have to integrate the any of the cloud solutions with your on-premise, in that cases, definitely you require the cloud connector. Okay. So basically cloud connector is just like connecting your, like in your on-premise solutions with your cloud solutions, or you can see your cloud solutions with your on-premise solutions. Okay, so how actually the landscape will looks like from the cloud counter point of view. Uh, let me try to show here you can see. So if you see this diagram, this is this is a little bit like lengthy diagram, but simply if you try to understand, so we can see we are having the different different thing. So one thing if you see in the first box here that we can see it is about our cloud solutions, right? We can see it is given as the SAP analytics cloud, but this you can treat as a cloud, a cloud solutions here, right? And in this case, sorry, not cloud solutions. The, yeah, this is the cloud solutions. And then down the side, we can see this is also the cloud solutions because right now, if you see, so we are also having the SAP S1 cloud solutions as well as part of public, private or hybrid, whatever, right? Then apart from that, apart so what is happening whenever we have to work with that, like, you know, our uh, like cloud solutions. So we always working with the internet. We can take very simple example. Let's say, ignore this diagram. We can take a very simple example of our Ariba. So whenever we have to work on the Ariba, we always have to use the particular web browser, whatever you have, and we have to re we required the internet connectivity. And based on that, we have to log in in the SAP Ariba. That means our Ariba is the like you know online solutions or the cloud solutions, right? And in some cases, if you are having the any of the backend system, right? And if that is the on premise, so in that case, as part of the integration, when you send any part any particular information from the cloud to your on premise or even from on premise to the cloud, so system will unable to connect like you know from the on premise to cloud or cloud to on premise because both are having different, different nature. So in that cases, what will happen in that cases, the cloud connector will come in the picture. Okay, so just for a simple example, you can take whenever we are using adapter to charge our handset or laptop. So if you see, we are having the plug, we are having our machine. Now both need to connect. So how we can do? So in that cases, we are using a kind of adapter and in that we are using the wire. Right. So whatever the adapter you are using, that is your CIG, that CIG adapter we are using there as part of the, we can say add on and whatever the wire we are going to use, that is actually a part of the cloud connector. Right. So one side you will see, you will have the thick USB. One side you will see, you will have the small USB. Right. So both are basically in the different nature. So just to connect our machine with the like a uh, uh, plug, we require the adapter along with the wire. So where is actually playing as that, like, you know, that uh, 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 connectivity connecting role and that is connecting your cloud solutions with the on-premise solutions. Okay. So this diagram is also explaining same thing. It is a little bit lengthy diagram, um, but if you see overall, we can see in the right-hand side, this is our actually the, like, you know, we can say cloud connector. And what actually cloud connector is actually working. So this cloud connector, we have to actually install in the customer firewall system. And basis team, they will install this cloud connector in, the, in their firewall system itself. Uh, 
and with the help of this cloud connector what we can do so it, we have to actually plug in our like on premise solutions with the cloud solutions so in this cases once we install the cloud connector then we have to actually perform some different different setup in the like you know on the cloud connector i'll show you in some time and with the help of that setup the system will able to understand like okay this is something your on-premise solutions this is something your cloud solutions and with the help of that the system will actually perform and the system will do the kind of connectivity between the on-premise and the like your, your cloud solutions so that is the main purpose of the cloud connector. Now, one thing I would like to add here that is actually very important. In some cases, you know, some customer, they are doing the multi ERP integration, right? That means they are having only one Ariba solutions, but they are having the multi multiple ERP system and they would like to connect the multiple ERP system with the Ariba, right? In that cases, you may have the doubt, like either do we have to uh, require multiple cloud, cloud connector or a single cloud connector, um, connector will be enough in that cases. So the answer is that in that cases, we required only a single cloud connector. That means with the help of a single cloud connector, we can actually integrate the multiple ERP system, whatever the different, different multiple ERP system you have. Okay. Even in some cases with some of the client, you may see, in with some of client, they may have the uh, some ERP system and non ERP system as well, right? And in that case, in some certain cases, if they want to uh, connect the ERP system, non ERP system with the your like cloud solutions, that something is also possible with the help of a single cloud connector tools. Okay, so this overall this cloud connector tool is actually the a very, very important tool that's something like you know that um, is uh, required to connect your like uh, cloud solutions with the on premise solutions there. You can see a simple diagram here in this uh, like a slide. So in this cases, we can see it is also clearly mentioned here that is SAP cloud connector acts as a bridge between the Ariba network and the on premise system. Ariba network means Ariba solutions and the on-premise system. And it facilitates data exchange and integration between the cloud and on-premise system securely. Okay. Now, if you see this complete diagram, in this cases, we can see the first block is talking about your applications, whatever different, different applications you are having, right? Then down the side, we can see we are having the cloud connectors like uh, the cloud, cloud connector here. And then in the last layer, we can see we are having the our on-premise solutions, whatever you have, right? So whatever the particular Ariba applications that you implemented, depending on the like uh, uh, like uh, a system architecture, in some cases, you may have different, different kind of child site as well, right? So whatever system A, system B, whatever you have, or we can say child system one, child system two, whatever you have, there's something required to connect to the cloud connector. So basically the, it is connecting to cloud connector in the backend. Uh, we have to do one-time configuration. It's not like that every time or uh, any time when you send any information from Ariba to ERP or from ERP to Ariba, and you would like to see like the transactions history on the cloud connector. Like I would like to see how it is sending the information so that kind of record you will not be able to find out on the cloud connector okay so the, this connectivity is happening bit in the back end and it's a one time setup itself we have to do and later the system will automatically take care of all the connectivity and in case if any of the discrepancy in case if any of the discrepancy the system will immediately report the error uh, generally i'm not sure if you uh, uh, seen that like or no or not so sometimes, you know, we are facing some problem on this, like uh, while sending some information from Ariba to ERP, we are getting some error, something 401 unauthorized error, something like that on the CIG tool in the transaction tracker. Okay. And in some certain cases, like, you know, even though you investigated all the information, you checked about the user ID password, you checked about your uh, admin user, uh, admin ID as well, what we're assigning on the CIG portal, but it's still problem, problem like, you know, that uh, uh, it's persist. 
So in that cases, what happens? In that cases, we have to check the connectivity with the cloud connector, like whatever the host and local name that we have, no, sorry, host and location ID that we have defined on the CIG tool. Either the same host and location ID is there in the cloud connector or not. So sometimes we find out like, oh, there is some mistake because the cloud connector is also a kind of case sensitive. All right. So in some cases, if you change the any case as well, or even you miss some dot as well, in that cases, your transactions will not happen and system will immediately report the error. So it is also acting as a like, you know, that basically uh, middleware, I would say, just for understanding purpose. And it's a kind of bridge that is between the Ariba and the ERP system. Okay. Then apart from that, let's talk about something data flows that we'll see in the system itself, a master data synchronization. So as we understood earlier, it's not about the master data or about the transactional data or whatever the particular informations that we are sending from the like ERP to Ariba or from Ariba to ERP system. So all this like, you know, happens with the help of the cloud connector. Then Cloud Connector is basically helping you to receive and send the real-time data. So once you create any particular transactions in the Ariba side, then immediately that particular transactions will, will reflect in the ERP side. And in case of any error or in case of any kind of like, you know, that uh, discrepancy, the system will immediately report the error as well. So we don't have to wait any kind of batch run or any manual push. The system will automatically like reflect the error in case if any uh, error will like uh, um, error is there, that system will report you immediately. Okay. So these are the different, different some like you know, informations about the cloud connector. Now let me do one thing. Let me log in on the cloud connector and I'll try to show you how the cloud counter looks like and whatever information we have to specify. So give me one moment. Okay, meanwhile, am I making some sense? Are you guys getting me? Yes, Ron, it's clear. Dalit here. Uh, regarding yeah. the master data elements that are flowing from ECC or Espohana or from outside applications, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, regarding the tax code, uh, we have that uh, setting within ECC or Espohana to mm -hmm. enable the features uh, uh, of master data elements, which will take care, which the program will take care to transmit the data, which is stored in the form of tables from ERP system to Ariba. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about uh, the master data elements like tax code lookup file, where uh, that has to flow from ERP system, but there is no standard uh, program that is available to enable mm -hmm. from ECC how to handle okay. such scenario. Do we cover that? No, that is your custom specific. So I think uh, you have to do some customized option because I believe the task code lookup file, that information will not flow from your ERP to Ariba as you said uh, earlier as well. So in that cases, we have to do some customization if it is really required. So, uh... Do you do uh, do you have any example on that or some documentation that you can share how to handle mm -hmm. such a request? I don't I don't have that kind of uh, things with me. Okay. Yeah. Then do we involve more applications like CPI, BTP to handle such uh, implementation? or we take care of it uh, in a regular scenario, or you have any experience that you can share with? No, in this case, uh, I don't think so. It required any kind of more applications like CPI or B2P, okay? Because see, uh, those are also a kind of, we can say integration platform, mm -hmm. right? So even the CIG also is an integration platform and SAP is also recommended to CIG or we have only one option about the CIG as well. So the matter is not about the integration tool. Matter is about the information, what is there in my ERP system and what Ariba is not supporting 
right so like as you said test code we can set we can send as part of the master data program right but in case of the test code lookup uh, lookup value that's something we don't have any such kind of standard option to present from erp to the ariba system right so in that cases i am assuming what we have to do we have to in this cases we have to go with the some custom way and as part of the custom you need to check with your first sap sap ariba customer support team like because see that entire master data itself is not there in the like uh, not coming from the erp system to ariba right and you would like to bring from the erp system to ariba system itself so even though we are having the placeholder but at least we should have a initial discussion with the sap ariba customer support team like we would like to bring this information from the erp to ariba might be sap team they may suggest to you okay do one thing you can just do some amendment in that standard master data program right and then you can write some logic to pull the text load test look and look up information and you can pull then the file will get like um, generated the file will come to ariba and in ariba they will align the file that information will get updated so this kind of thing you may receive from the ariba i'm just saying my assumptions my thought uh, lalit yes and uh, then we also required then based on that we have to because now you are having the input like okay this it is feasible from ariba side then what we can do we can uh, catch up our sap app consultant we can give the requirement like this is the information that is about the task school lookup field information and this is storing on this particular field this table and this information we would like to capture and we would like to send to the ariba so can you please please check the feasibility like what kind of logic what kind of like you know that code we have to write there or what kind of informations you required right so okay. then only based on the feasibility we can say like you know that you will able to push it the thing is that why i said this statement because erp side you have the control whatever the logic uh, modification logic addition you want to do you can do it but sending the information from erp erp to ariba is not a big thing big thing is that when the erp information will come to your ariba integration touch point ariba integration touch point has to accept that information correct, correct. that's the reason we need, to, we need to reach out to the ariba team as well okay, okay. because in uh, one of my recent projects that i worked on we used uh, pi and postman service and then uh, also tried cpi to integrate that information because there is no standard uh, integration program enabled in ERP system. And also there was one more uh, master data element, which is work order that comes from mm -hmm. a third party application. Then we have to integrate that with PI or uh, we need to place it in a, in a specific uh, shared drive. And that again mm -hmm. picks up uh, by CPI and sends it to Ariba through CIG. So do we have any documentation or any session of our trainings which covers these two uh, master data? Uh, like you said, uh, we don't have any for tax code lookup file. Do we have something for work order uh, information? No, Lalit. Okay. This training can include only best practice, right? Custom thing may not. OK. Uh, but work order, I will check because in my previous project as well, the client, they have uh, uh, integrated the work order as well. Mm -hmm. And even they had, the, you know, the track track interface. I'm not sure. Track is the interface like which we are having a, a kind of third party applications. Mm -hmm. And uh, some customer, some client they're using to book the time sheet. Mm -hmm. And again, the time sheet, they're booking the time sheet against the work order. And that time sheet is creating the service entry sheet directly uh, like, you know, in the back end. So if you have the integration with the ERP, in the ERP, like uh, when you create the contract in the ERP, the contract will go to track system and against the contract, even the work order will also be there. And against the work order, they are creating in, in booking the time sheet. And once they approve the time sheet in the track, that information comes to ERP, it creates the time sheet. So in that cases, client, they have integrated the track with the Ariba system as well. And they were sending the work order along with the time sheet to Ariba. How I was not the part of that uh, uh, project completely, but I will do some investigation. I'm not committing. If I'll get some information, I definitely I'll share with you. Sure. And 
to reach out to you for any such information. Uh, is there an email ID that you have and you can yeah, share team, that with this? Team, or... team, team will help you. Okay, and also any LinkedIn uh, account that you have where we can reach out to you, you can share with yeah. them. Team is having the all the information. Team will help you. You can just discuss with the team. They will help you all the things. Sure, and I'll re reach out to your firm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, if you don't mind, let's take a ten minutes of break, and uh, then we'll talk about the cloud connector, and we'll discuss in detail about whatever cloud connector. Uh, once again, I'm saying one more thing just to clarify the information. In some cases, I may show you some of the, my project is specific document. So I would like to make this session as very user friendly so that you can easily understand whatever things are going on. So please do not expect like, you know, those things also like, you know, you should have. So in that cases, it might not be possible. Okay. So that uh, showing the documents is just like, you know, for understanding purpose, like, you know, that, so in some cases, uh, you, will, you, you will get a chance to work on this. If you're already aware, that's fine. But if you don't know where, then in, in, in some cases in future, if you get a chance, chance to work on that component. So at least you have the understanding like, yeah, I know about this, I can do it. So that's a, that is my intention. So I may show you some documents as well for a look and feel, but please uh, do not expect like, you know, that thing you should also have. It's my humble request. It's for everyone. Sure. So it is only for awareness purpose uh, and the documents and uh, information might not match with uh, the project that we are going exactly. to Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Rahul, can you show me how you navigated here from spend management, if you don't? No, no this is not a spend management link. You are having different uh, like cloud connector link. You have to uh, run the URL of the cloud connector. You will have to this kind of URL of the cloud connector. And then it will ask your uh, credentials like uh, login password. You have to enter, then it should, it will give you the same screen. Uh, Administ core administrator, we get an option to click on that no, link. No. no, no, this is cloud connector. Oh, cloud connector. Okay. okay. The way you have separate login for network, uh, we have separate login for cloud connector, right, Rohan? Exactly. Okay. Generally, as the uh, Ariba consultant, you are not getting the cloud counter access. Uh, this I arrange only to show you for a look and feel. But because even my previous project as well, I was checking one thing. So even I asked to my basis consultant, he was very close to me. I asked him, can I get the cloud counter access to see something? They simply declined because this is something completely done by the basis team. Okay, uh, everyone is here. Shino, Ram. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay, so before going to talk about this uh, cloud counter system, let me give some overview about this, uh, some basic configuration and the implementation uh, part of the cloud connector. That will help you to uh, understand easily the cloud connector. So as we discussed earlier about the cloud connector like setup and uh, and even some overview as well, like the cloud connector serves a kind of linkage between cloud and your existing system, whatever on-premise system you have, right? And a single cloud connector supports connectivity with the multiple backend system as well. So it's not like that you should have the multiple cloud connector in case you are having multi ERP system. It's not like that. A single cloud connector will serve like sub, will support like uh, the different different multiple ERP connectivity. Okay. So generally, what your basic team they are doing? So the basic team they have to run this URL that is tools.hana1demand.com, and uh, this is a one particular site they have to go to this particular site and once they will go to this particular site then they will they have to find out the cloud connector options there like if you see for your look and feel this is the screenshot of that particular site so once you go there you know like uh, on that particular site hana1 hana1 demand.com you will get this kind of screen we have to click on the cloud then you will get the options of the cloud connector and the cloud connector we have to install based on the different operating system. So if you know about your SAP ERP system, so you know we are having different different operating system in the ERP system, right? 
and the base system they are like you know pretty much aware whatever the operating system that you have in your erp system they will uh, first check this what operating system that you have like linux or something mac or windows mm mostly you will see windows again it depends so based on that operating system they will choose the particular like, like a cloud connector here and we can see if we are having download options download link and they will download that particular cloud connector in the customer firewall and then once they will download this will get downloaded as part of the applications so even though it is going to install as applications, like how we are installing the LinkedIn, right? So LinkedIn, we can install as part of the applications. So we can create our account in the application itself. Even we can, we can use as an application also. But uh, sometimes when we are using LinkedIn, uh, you know, in our machine laptop, so we are logging from the web. So same thing, like, you know, it will get a kind of like, uh, you know, that uh, applications. And once you will get the applications, then you can log in on the cloud connector. Depending on the feasibility, if you want to log in with the applications, generally applications uh, we are not following, we are following the with the web login itself. So you will have the login credentials of the like a cloud connector. You will get the separate URL of the cloud connector, even user ID and password as well. That's something we have to do. So this is screenshot is simply talking about like the how the apps looks like of the cloud connector and if you want to open so in that cases you can see here in a web browser enter https and host name and port name this is a combination of this host name and the port name as well as part of the web login so we have to like uh, uh, generally base system they will take uh, all those things we don't have to worry about this so they will like uh, they will have the uh, url of that and based on that like you know they will like log in on the web and once they will log in you can see like this so we can see something local host 8443 so 8443 basically is your port name okay and i'll tell you how we can find out the uh, like you know that uh, host name as well that's something i will tell you so that we can they can like uh, uh, execute that url uh, on any of the browser then it will ask you your id and the password and once you enter your id and the password then system will like uh, logged in successfully in the system and once you logged in successfully in the system so very first time this is something very first time you can see all the step it is mentioned here uh, let me just recap once again for your easy understanding so in the first step, we have to go to access tools, hanawandemand.com. Then we have to scroll down to cloud connector section. And based on the operating system, we have to download the particular uh, like you know, cloud connector. It will be a kind of zip file it will downloaded. Then we have to actually, th this is a file. Like we can see, once the file is saved, you start installation and provide the necessary information in the wizard, such as installation folder locations, port, your JDK path, this kind of information they have to add. And once the installation is complete, you will able to find out it in install app in the fifth step. So like this, you will able to find out, you can see here, this is showing something for your easy understanding. And after that, in a web browser, enter HTTPS hostname port, that is that like your URL of the cloud connector that we have to enter. And once you enter, then system will ask you like, you know, to give the ID and password. Okay. And you can see one more thing on the login screen, enter username and password as administrator manage small cases. So as I said earlier as well, this is something like you know, case sensitive because I faced lots of problem. I means I hope you all also faced lots of problems during initial implementation. And then we realize that, oh, in the Ariba side, we have maintained something information in the capital and in the cloud country, it was small. That's why the transactions was not flowing. Okay, so uh, SAP is also simply mentioned this is something like a case sensitive we have to maintain in the small case and once you maintain all the information in the small case, so this is something just login information, then system will ask you to like you know that to change your password for the first time you can change the password by providing the old and new password and once you do that, then like we have to proceed with the account creation.
So account creation means account will automatically get created. So the when very first time you logged in, then system will ask you to provide the uh, like you know the information about the sub account. So generally in the cloud connectors, what we are doing, we are creating sub account, and in the sub account, we have to provide the different different kind of informations. Okay, this is important from the certification point of view. So if anyone is any one of you is preparing for CIG certification, so recently this question was there. I uh, give the exam last week only. So this example was there, like what kind of information should we are providing, what is the location ID, what is the like, you know, that uh, host name we are adding, this kind of questions was there in the certification exam. So you can see what kind of information we have to provide in the cloud connector. We can see we have to give the landscape host name. That is something your, uh, I would say simply uh, hana1demand.com, right? Account name, whatever account name that you are going to use, even you can see they have given the account information as well. This is something Ariba, uh, you know, that uh, shared information. So we have to give the account name for test account. We have different account name for production account. We have different account name that we have to add display name. Uh, you can display name any of the uh, best on your choice. I'll show you how to uh, add and display name based on your choice. Then account user. P user ID that you have received in email when CIG was enabled on the Ariba network. We will talk about this P user ID. Might be someone of you is already aware about the P user ID, but P user ID is actually called as the CIG, CIG licensing ID as well. Okay. So when we are implement we are enabling the CIG system will generate the P user ID, and that P user ID will be the customer specific unique ID. Okay. So in simple we're calling them as a as a, like you know that uh, uh you know like basically that cig licensing id so that cig licensing id we have to actually provide in that like user id and then whatever the password you uh, you have like uh, done the password reset in the user id that password also we have to provide there then we have to specify the location id what is the location id any unique ID identifying the location of this cloud connector for a specific sub account. So basically you can provide any of the information in the location ID, but base system they are providing relevant to the our uh, backend system. So they have to add one location ID there and this location ID is a very important. Okay. So what is the location ID just for your simple understanding? I'll show you, I'll tell you. Uh, Basically, it is just masking or you can say hiding your ERP information. So we had provide the like a kind of ERP specific information in the form of the location ID. Okay. Then we have to enter the host name and host name actually a suitable proxy host from your network and the port that is that is specified for this proxy. You need to specify a proxy server that support SSL communications. So generally host name is already there in our ERP system. We can find out from the SM59 transaction code and that no host name we can provide here. Okay. Then we have to give the port name as well. So we have to enter the proxy proxy uh, port name that information we have to add. And once you add this information at the initial step, then we have to click on the save. And once you click on the save, then your account setup will be done on the cloud connector. So this is a kind of initial setup that we have to do. And if you see a kind of a screen, we, it looks like, like this. I'll show you in the system as well. So this is a cloud connector screen. Here we can see define sub account. This option system will ask you immediately once you logged in first time in the cloud connector. And here we have to enter all the information. You can see region, sub account, display name, sub account, password, proxy, all the information so we have to enter here. Okay. Then apart from that, we can see some other information in the down the page, landscape host, account name, display name, account user, this information we have to add here, right? And in the 10th step, once your sub account is created, click on the cloud to on-premise link and then click on the plus sign to add information about your backend system. So in this case is, since we are going to connect our cloud to the on-premise solutions, so down the side, if you see in the left hand side, down, we can see cloud to on-premise. We have to click on this option, then you will get the plus options here. 
and once you click on this plus option it will ask you to enter some information like backend system protocol internal host internal port number virtual host virtual port different different informations it will ask you so i know as a functional it's very hard to uh, understand all this terminology because these are the uh, technical and that's why this activity done by the basis consultant itself okay and once you've done all this activity then you can see the backend system information listed if you have multi erp system setup click again on plus sign and add information of your another backend system so why we have to do this like in case of other backend system definitely for other backend system port name will be different right your protocol will be different host name will be different so whatever that other backend system port name host name you have that's something you have to add once again here okay so like this we can add now you can see this is a screenshot about your like the uh, you know like a sub account under sub account what we added from cloud to on premise promise information that is your backend information that it is showing here okay same way if you come downside you can see once you maintain this entry then you will be able to see this particular entry and most important thing once like you will add our like you know, in like our entry here about the backend system so how we came to know either our cloud connector is reachable or not reachable with the backend system how we came to know so this kind of information you will be able to see here itself so we can see we are having something check results reachable this kind of uh, information you will see i'll show you in the system so you will able to see based on that you have to understand like okay whatever the informations that we added here that information looks good and we can proceed further okay so like this you can see different different uh, systems so basically they have added in this screenshot and not only the uh, erp system even they have added some non erp system as well like we can see backend type non sap system non sap system abap system different different system they have added here okay so these are the different kind of informations like actually we had provide that will talk in some time in the system itself then apart from that you can see one more information it is talking about here so when actually come to here in this like a cloud to on premise so here it is asking resources available for this that is actually your like we can say backend system information and that like you know url we have to specify here and for that url you can see the plus icon we have to click on the plus icon and once you click on this plus icon it will ask you to give the informations about the url so we can see it is highlighted clearly in this url path we have to add the url backend system url but the question is that how we came to know like which url we have to specify so this information also it is clearly given here you can go to transaction code sicf okay so you can see the url path for the web services on the on the on premise erp system can be found using the t code sicf this is an admin activity base system activity and in this example you can see the url is url is something sap bc srt xip rb arba this kind of ER, url it is there so like this basically we have to find out you can see the url here right i'll try to show you if possible if i'll have the access in my system as well but like this we can find out url you can maintain and once you maintain and if all the information is actually correct that means we are good and we can proceed with the next configuration okay now let me brief in the system itself live how actually we have to do all this activity so as i said whenever we have to log in in the cloud connector you will have the separate url including your host and host name and the port name like here you can see this 137 116 118 118 this is actually your host name right and you can not only 118 up to 30 this is your host name and 8443 is your port name right can anyone tell me how we can find out the port name if you know any idea to anyone I'll show you. Even I'm not the basis guy, but I'll try to show you. 
I am just Ariba consultant. Generally, the host name you can find out. Uh, we are having different different transaction code. That's something base system they have to you know that uh, run. But in some of the cases, like we can find out host name and the other port information. So for that, we have to log in in our ERP system. And once you log in in the ERP system, we have to use transaction code SM59. Okay. So once you go in this SM59, this screen will see letter point of time as well. And once you come in the SM59, so basically SM59 is, is the transaction code for the RFC information. So RFC configuration also the part of the, uh, you know, that uh, basis configuration they will do. So whatever the particular particular like RFC configuration they have configured. So we can come in the SM59 transaction code. And then once you come here, so here we can see we have the option that is the HTTPS connections to external server. Okay, so once you come here in the external server, here basically you will be able to see the different different port, different different like you know that RFC or whatever they have created, right? So once you come here, here you will you will be able to find out that particular like RFC RFC what base system they have configured. So this basically whenever base system they are creating the RFC, so we also have to guide them. Generally, the, if you are having you are acting as a team lead or project manager, you will be the part of this configuration. They will uh, discuss with you. So whenever they are creating this RFC destination, so the best practice is that the RFC name should be your system name followed by the client ID, right? For example, if you see, I logged in in the S4H 100, right? You can see in the right corner extremely corner you can see s4h 100 so whenever they have to configure any of the rfc destination they must have to give the system like rfc name that is s4h clnt 100 okay why we have to follow this like a, a system name followed by the client id because you know in the erp side we are having different different environment we have the uh, sandbox development quality production not only this even when you go in the side in quality system you may have the multiple client if you go in the development system you may have the multiple client so as a functional it is very important if we are navigating to this transaction so we can easily find out like which rfc is created like you know in this system so if they are going to give the name as the rfc cig golden apps or in some cases, even my one of my recent project, I have seen that the base system, they were a little bit new and we shared the documents to them like to create the uh, the RFC in the uh, backend system. What they did, they copied the same information. So this presentation, it prepared for the uh, training purpose. So in the presentation itself, the naming convention is given as a training client. So what they did, they just copy the same name here, trading client. They thought like this is best practice. We have to give the trading client name, right? So in these cases, you may have different lots of confusion, like what is the training client? What is this golden apps? So it's better we can follow the system name followed by the client ID. That is a good practice. Okay. So once you come to this particular transactions, and if you open this RFC, just double click on this RFC. Once you double click on the RFC, you will get all the information here. So in this cases, uh, this is something um, uh, like a demo site. It's not properly completely configured. So in this cases, we cannot find out the like, uh, port name information here. Sorry, we can see port name here, port number here. Okay, so uh, all the informations you will able to find out here. Like you can see what is the host name. You can see what is the path prefix that you can see here or what is the port name that's something information you can find out here even if the post proxy host is also configured you will able to find out like 8443 number here along with the proxy proxy host name so this information as a functional we can easily find out from the sm59 transaction code okay so generally this activity done by the basis team so accordingly they will build up this like information this page and once they will logged in the first time they will get the options here define sub account so in this cases since we are logging the next time uh, like uh, many, uh, up to many times so this information already like you know that uh, created 
but once you logged in first time so in case of defined sub account you will have that like you know system will ask you what's wrong here system will ask you to in like you know provide some all the informations to create a like you know that uh, uh, your sub account and what information it will ask i'll show you but we can see so you can see just like as a, uh, earlier you asked me how i navigated to this thing so i just uh, executed the url this url and now you can see it is asking to enter the username and the password so i have to give the id and password here let me give uh meanwhile am i making some sense are you able to follow me yes rohan i will talk all the parameter we will talk like you know that uh, in sequence way so i'm just trying to go as part of the implementation manner so earlier we have done this CIG add-on installation now we are working on the cloud connector and then in the next session we will move to our uh, erp add-on configuration as well now we can see so once you come here in the sub account then here you will get this kind of page let me just click on this edit you will get this kind of page here and here you can see display name so whatever display name you want to choose you can choose any of the particular display name so in this cases it is simply mentioned defined sub account but in some cases if you want to change it like ariba account right you can choose ariba account as well and click on the save once you click on the save you can see it is showing as ariba account so based on the requirement like you know that we can give only of the information here in the sub account then apart from that if you see it all the other information what it, we have given so as i said since this is a one time activity that's why this is not a table but we can see we have to specify the region we have to give the give the region host name we have to give the sub account certificate right then we have to enter some things it will come automatically then display name so we have given display name ariba account this is something like initiated by who has done this activities right and uh, then apart from that we can see something description so this kind of information that's something you will able to see here okay so this is the information about like you know that um, about your this uh, sub account and apart from that in the downside as well you can see it is asking some information like the uh, status showing the information not configured we can see some turn information that is connected not connected this kind of thing you will able to you can see here so this is the one time activity once you logged in in the like you know cloud connector then apart from that in the next whatever the different account you want to actually create different account means whatever different erp or non erp system you want to specify we can specify you can come downside you can see cloud to on premise solutions uh, on premise to cloud solutions right different different options you can see so you can come here like let's say you want to work with the cloud to on-premise solutions you can come to cloud to on-premise and then here you can see we have the plus option same thing if we're talking about in the ppt so we can come here click on this plus option like add option and once you click on this add option here we have to choose backend system backend type whatever backend system that you have you can see here like ABAP system, SAP, SAP HANA, even this option recently SAP team they have added as part of latest release. Then SAP application Java, something composition, business connector, gateway, other system, non-SAP system. So based on the requirement, whatever system you want to choose, we can choose. So as of now, for ERP system, we always have to choose the ABAP system. So we have to select ABAP system here, then click on this next. So once you click on this next, now it is asking about the protocol. And in this cases, if you see, we can see we are having the multiple options here. Okay. Now, one thing is important here. That's something, uh, once again, this configuration done by the basis consultant, we don't have to config. But few things uh, just I'm sharing you based on my past experience. So generally here, we are getting confusion between HTTP and HTTPS okay so sometimes what happened it's only a single alphabet uh, differences right now sometimes what happened custom the basis consultant they maintain the url in the https okay let me see if what was there in the 
account it was talking about something https right so we can see what is happening basis team while well, configuration they are following they're maintaining the information in the https right and they maintain the, all the particular other information here itself but what happened in the cig tool so in the cig side as well we have to provide the this kind of information while adding the system id i'll show you in the coming session so due to some mistake if you're going to copy the information so sometimes what we are doing like you know instead of the https we maintain the only http in the cig side while adding the system id so now cig is knows about the http cloud connectors we maintain as the https that's the problem okay and in that cases we are trying to connect with the cloud connector but we are getting error that means like the connection connection is failed and we are checking like oh we added the system id in the cig tool and we have added all the proxy host number all the location id all the information we have added but why is still it is failing and in this uh, uh, cloud connector as well we are verifying all the information like we maintain all the like uh, required information but why it is giving this kind of problem so the problem is that missing of the alphabet of the s so we have to make sure or in some cases if you're facing any kind of connectivity issue on the cig tool uh, i'll show you once i'll show you i'm just repeating like uh, about cig tool please don't get confused but when we are testing the connectivity on the cig tool and if the connectivity is getting failed or you are trying to send some uh, transactional data from the arriva to erp and it getting failed on the cig due to some cloud connector error so now you will we, you have to investigate you will be in trouble like what to do in that cases so very first thing you have to check you have to come on the cloud connector or ask your basis team please check the information what we maintain in the C uh, cloud connector even some cases they may say we have maintained the correctly there is no problem in the uh, cloud connector so we have to ask them please send me the screenshot because system ultimately will not have if you are if you're acting as a team lead or project manager then it might be you may have otherwise generally as the ariba consultant ariba analyst you will not have this kind of access so we have to ask them please send the like a uh, screenshot what you maintain and we have to compare the protocol we have to compare the host name we have to compare the proxy name sorry uh, location id that three things we have to actually take okay so this is something one things i would like to share you because uh, recently we faced we spent around two days because of only this alphabet and sometimes you know we are not uh, uh, checking the minor things and we are thinking everything is working correctly okay so here we have to add the protocol and then after that we have to click on this next we have to give the internal host and like you know the internal port number okay so let me just try to copy the same information because i don't have this kind of information so i'll take from this only internal host let me give this something wdf.scp.com I know this is incorrect, but just to proceed to the next screen, I'm adding this dummy value. Let's see. I'm not sure system will allow or not, but let's see. So like this, whatever the host name and that internal like uh, port number that you have, we can add here. And then we have to click on this next. Once you click on this next, you can see it is talking about, it is recommended that to use virtual cloud site name that is different from the internal name. If this is something I think uh, a kind of like you know that uh, uh, information we can ignore. I'll try to click on the next once again. Now we can see it is something allowing to add. So we can click on this next. And once you click on this next, let's see. Okay. So once you click on this next, now it is asking about the certificate. So what certificate earlier I shown you in the PPT from the SICF uh, transaction code. So if I can access to SICF, let me try to see.
you can see this is basically actually this is not the right system but at least you can see even same screenshot we have seen that in the ppt as well for your understanding purpose like this you can see and here what we can see path path is actually your url right so this path actually we have to find out so we can come here from the sic app you can find out the path and whatever the path you you can see here so we have to add the ariba as well you can find out the path and the path actually we have to specify here okay as part of the like certificate so first here we have to choose any of the particular like certificate so in our cases since we are doing the erp integration so we have to choose certificate here and then if you click on this next so let me this is something asking about system certificate of our logon that means are you would you like to follow certificate based authentication or you want to go with the basic authentication so i will not go with the certificate based authentication i will choose basic basic means i'll not I'll take this that means basic and then click on this next now you can see it is asking something host in the requester user header i will keep use virtual host let me see some other option virtual is fine what we specified click on this next it is asking some description i'll add the certificate information just to close this and then click on the next now you can see what informations we have added that's something it is showing here but in this cases we are having some error trust for the principal propagation not configured so that's something different thing i'm also not aware but like this once you do that click on this finish and once you click on the finish you can see the system has been added here okay so once you add this now in this cases we can see we have the option about checking so in this cases we can see it is showing the search result as unchecked because whatever the information that we added that information is was incorrect we know earlier right but at least once like you know you will provide all the particular information correctly you will able to see here you can see the, it will give you the result like you know, reachable so how you seen that here in this uh, screenshot the same you will see there it's a like here you can see reachable right so same way you will able to find out the receipt sorry how we have seen that in the ppt same way you will able to find like you know you will able to see that like a receivable here so right now we can see it is not reachable because all the informations we have given incorrectly okay so once you do that then apart from that we have to give some information about resource of this something that Prost and, Hoxie, uh, Prost and uh, host and proxy name and this information you can provide by coming here if you click on this add so here you can see url path that we can add here right so exactly that url we have to add here itself then this it, it is active yes it is active this we can keep as it is here if you want to add and description we can add and description here some little information and then click on the save once you click on the save that's done so like that like you know um, this is the job only we have to perform in the cloud connector so like that we have to do the cloud connector setup so once you come here we have to provide the information in the sub account and then whatever different different erp system or even non-erp system also you want to actually add we can add here so how to add we uh, understood Apart from that, we can see some other options like on premise to call you cloud. So this is something applicable when we are actually doing the integration, like our source system will be completely backend. You want to do with the Ariba, like a cloud, then we can do, right? So generally it's not applicable for Ariba, but for other, you can, if you want to, you can do that. Then something monitoring options SAP has given here. We can come to monitor and the cloud to on premise cloud on premise to cloud that information you can come here you can check the uh you know that you can monitor the time like a, a the activities what is happening in the real time right same thing we can see monitor on premise to cloud this information also you can observe here you can come you are having the audits option here so basically with the help of the audits you can see all the particular transactions or activities or whatever we are doing in the ariba it is getting captured here so you can see earlier i did some configuration you can see by today's date 
all the information is getting captured here. Okay, so this kind of audit log also you will able to find out in the cloud connector. Uh, this is helping you in case uh, someone made some changes. And you want to track the changes like who done this, when done this, that kind of information you can actually find out here and log and trace file. So this is something, you know, in the SAP ERP system also, we are having trace functionality. So that kind of trace functionality log also you will able to find out here, okay? So this is something just a high level or not high level, just overview about the cloud connector that we have done. I believe at least you understood the cloud connector setup, how to set up the cloud connector, whatever different, different activities we have to do. So actually, as you know, during the implementation, even though we do not have to work on the cloud connector, but at least if you know what to do, so in case of any challenges, you can also, uh, you know, that to work as a side of resources and you can guide your basic team as well. Okay, so this is the thing about the cloud connectors. Clear? Any question? Yeah, Rahul. So one question I had was on uh, the internal uh, host and the virtual host, right? So how does that link actually work? So we, is it is it something that a system automatically does, or we need to define something on the other than the page that we define? No, no, system automatically does. So once you provide the host name, that is URL path, that's based on the system, I guess system defined automatically. Okay, whatever virtual host I give, it will automatically map that uh, virtual host to the internal host I have given in that configuration, is it? Yeah, I, I guess so, yes. I'm not 100% sure. I just said okay. I'm not the basis okay. consultant. I'm expertise okay. in the MM ERP side from uh, functional point of view and from Ariva. But this thing I learned, like, you know, based on my past experience, I was facing lots of challenges, participating, leading the okay. team as well. Yeah. Thanks, Rafa. Yeah. Okay. Lalit, Shino, you're good. Yes, Ron, I'm good. Uh, just want to know, uh, what was the document that you have taken through today from the material that we have on LMS? Yeah, the documents you have right in on the LMS. Mm -hmm. So today we had been through which document out of those? Cloud cloud connector. Let me show you. No, module 10, right? I'll show you one second. No. Uh we gone through with this document that is a cloud connector, but as I said earlier, as well, like I will use some other my uh you know a project especially document as well so that you will have better understanding but today we gone through with this document we have gone with document number 10 okay yeah cloud connect we're not okay. going uh, in sequence according to the module one two that are listed there we're going for the uh, implementation we are going actually from the implementation like how basically we're building uh all these things right uh, we can go with the document wise as well, no, no, but no. in that case, it be it be yeah. Okay. okay. Got it. Yeah. All right. So that's it, and for today. And uh, now, if you see overall, so we have done the CIG add-on installation. We have done the cloud connector. And in tomorrow's session, we'll talk about the third step, like, you know, those generally the same thing happening in the real time as well. So actually it's happening parallelly. So Ariba, SAP, Ariba shared service team, they have to enable CIG as well. So tomorrow we'll talk about CIG enablement and then we'll move to the add-on configuration. So whatever technical things that uh, as part of add-on configuration base system they are doing, that will talk at high level. And then after that, we'll move to the add-on configuration from functional point of view, and we'll discuss in detail level the concept of the that add-on configuration. Okay. Okay, team. So that's it from my side today. See you tomorrow. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you, Rohan. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.